Praise God. If you have your Bibles, John chapter 14. Uh, we're blessed this month. We have a lot to look forward to. God's uh, doing great things. And, you know, God's brought us so far. He's done so much in our life. But the good news is, is that he is not done with us. Can you say amen? Each and every one of us, we're a work in progress. And God is constantly uh, helping us. He's constantly, constantly bettering us and, and helping us in every area of our lives. And uh, we're so blessed this month as we're going to be diving into a, a series called Spirit Field. We're going to look at the Holy Spirit. We're going to look at how God's Holy Spirit and, and, uh, ena enables us, empowers us, uh, teaches us. So we have some great things to look forward to uh, this month. So you don't want to miss out. You want to make sure that you're here uh, every, every Wednesday uh, to just take part and be blessed by this this series. You know, as we talk about this, as we talk about being spirit-filled, you know, we, we thank God for our Heavenly Father. We thank God for who He is. Our, our God is a giving God. He's so graceful to us. He's so gracious. His, his mercies are everlasting, the Bible says. We thank God that He called us. We thank God for Jesus and the wonderful sacrifice, the perfect Lamb of God who shed His blood so that you and I can be free. We thank God for his sacrifice, for the life that he lived while, while he, uh, before he came to earth, how he was there ruling with God, and he, he stepped down from heaven and, and spent 33 years here on earth living a life of, po of poverty, but a life of ministry, healing people, raising people from the dead, preaching and ministering and, and changing lives, and we thank God for Jesus. We thank Jesus for his grace and, and his love for us. And we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We thank God for who the Holy Spirit is in our life, how he leads us, how he directs us. You know, everything that he teaches us, how he shows us, and how he comforts us. So tonight we're going to learn a few things regarding the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You know, I think we could spend as much time as, as we can on being spirit-filled. Can you say amen? We have so much to learn, and, and we may have come a long way. You may know a lot of scriptures. You may know a lot about the Word of God, but we can always learn more. Can you say amen? Now, we don't have to learn more about being carnal. I think we have that one in the bag, right? We have that. We, we've learned, based on where you've come from and your background, we've all, we all know how it is to be carnal, to go uh, against the Spirit, to go along with our, our carnal nature, to, to do what pleases us and, and satisfies us. We all know what that means and how that feels. We also know where it gets us. Think back. Think back before you stepped into the kingdom of God, before you surrendered your life to God. Think back of your life and what direction you were headed, where you were going. Perhaps some of you were in a place of depression and, and you had no hope in your life, no direction. In spiritual bondage. Caught up in different vices that were destroying your life, that were, that were sending you towards death and destruction. Aren't you grateful for the grace of God? Aren't you grateful for his calling, how he redeemed us, how he saved us, how the Holy Spirit called us and drew us to our loving Father? Some of you were spiritually incarcerated. Some of you were physically incarcerated. But praise God, here you are in the presence of God here in church on, on a Wednesday night. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that amazing? All the great things that God has done. So we're going to focus this month on being spirit-filled because we need God's help to be spirit-filled in our lives, in our church, in our ministry, at our jobs, in our family, in our relationships, at our schools. We need to learn and continue to learn how to be spirit-filled and what that means. And if we're going to talk about being spirit-filled, we have to first talk about the Holy Spirit. And tonight... We're going to be learning about God, the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 25, we're going to read that, and then we're going to jump over to 2 Corinthians 3.17. We're going to read those scriptures, and then we're going to pray. We're going to believe God to have his way. We're going to believe that the Holy Spirit would have his way tonight. John 14.25, and this is our series of scripture. The Bible says this. Jesus spoke this to his disciples and speaks this to us. He says, I'm telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, 
that is the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Verse 27, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. We have to put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples. They were with Jesus, their Lord and Savior, day and night. They were, they were walking with Him. They were, they were in relationship with Him. They were listening to His truth, to His words. They, they knew His character. They knew His personality. They, they, they may have knew, uh, known the things that got under His skin. They, they learned about Him and who He was on a physical level. Think of, think of your family, how you get to know them throughout the years, and then over time you get to know what makes them tick. You get to know what drives them. And, and this is... This is uh, what they experienced with Jesus. They knew him. But it was nearing time for him to lay down his life. And as he was talking, he was saying certain things. And I could imagine that the disciples were, were maybe scratching their head and, his heads and wondering, why is he talking like this? He's talking as, as, as if he's going to depart, as if he's not going to be with us anymore. And Jesus understood their anxiety, their fear, their worry. And this is why he told them this. He said, I'm not leaving you alone. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit who will teach you everything. He will remind you of everything I've told you. I'm leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. The Lord was telling them that. And tonight, the Lord is telling you that. Believer, what are you going through tonight? What have you been through recently? And you're, you're just trusting in God for, for a breakthrough. You're trusting in God for, for comfort and peace. Tonight, I believe that this evening is a, is, is a turning point for you. I believe that tonight things are going to change in your life. I believe tonight as you receive the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, God is going to change the course of things in your life. We look forward to that. We believe in that. Now let's jump over to 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 17, the Bible says, For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Praise God. Bow your head with me, and let's agree. Let's pray this evening. Father, we're so grateful this evening for all that you've done for us, my God. We thank you for how far you've brought us from, God. We thank you for the change, God, for redemption, God. We thank you for salvation. Lord, tonight I pray as we read your word, God, I pray that you would teach us, that you would teach our hearts. Holy Spirit, that you would have your way. Father, that you would just teach us the spiritual things, God, that will help us, that will change us, God, so that we will walk out of here different, God, knowing you more, Lord. And I pray, Father, that, that I would decrease, God, that you would increase, that your word would be spoken, Lord. And, and Holy Spirit, we pray, have your way in this place. We thank you. We praise you. And we ask in Jesus' name, and we all say, amen. For the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God, to be in the presence of God. There is liberty here tonight. There is breakthrough. There is salvation. There is redemption. There is healing here tonight. And why? It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit. This is one of the blessings of coming to the house of God to, to, to worship Him in the body of Christ. I understand we could worship God wherever we're at, at home, and we should. In our car, at work, wherever we're at, we should worship God. But there's something powerful about coming together in unity with a body of believers, believing God for His Holy Spirit to move. And I believe God did that tonight, and God is continuing to do that. God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Holy Trinity. You know, we get a beautiful picture of, of the distinct Godhead in Matthew chapter 3 verse 15 through 17 and in this scripture that we're going to read the context here is Jesus came on the scene and and he was starting his earthly ministry and and we we read about John the Baptist we understand who John the Baptist was that he was a forerunner for Christ that he was called to to make straight the crooked path to to make straight the path for the Lord so the Lord could come and accomplish his ministry John the Baptist was a powerful man of God and he was known as John the Baptist so Jesus came to him and, and told him to, to baptize me. Jesus said, baptize me. And John, in his humility, said, Lord, let it not be. Why, you should be baptizing me. 
And here was Jesus' response in Matthew 3, verse 15. But Jesus said, it should be done. For we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him in verse 16. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, now listen to this. The heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. So you have Jesus being baptized there by John the Baptist. And as he's being baptized, in verse 16, it tells us that the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. Get the picture, the visual here. In verse 17, and a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Here we get a beautiful picture of God the Father, of God the Son, and of God the Holy Spirit, all working in unity. A beautiful picture of who God is. The Holy Spirit in the Word of God has so many things ascribed to him, so many we wouldn't have enough time to talk about it all tonight, but I want to focus on a couple tonight as we talk about the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit is ascribed creation. Creation is ascribed to Him. Now let's look in Genesis. Let's go back to the beginning of the Word of God. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In verse 2, the earth was formless, and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. Now listen to this. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. In this passage here, we're opening up in the beginning of creation where God was getting ready to, to create all things. This is a chapter where he says, let there be light, and there was light. And he spoke things into existence. And do we see who was there at the very beginning? Do we see the Holy Spirit at work in creation? The Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, as we look there in verse, verse 2, it's interesting, as, as, as we're reading here out of the, the New Living Translation, it said the earth was formless. And the Hebrew word here for formless is toho. And you know what it means? It means confusion. It says, and empty, or void, as another translation says. And the, the Hebrew definition there is boho, and it means to be void. So you think about creation, and before God created the earth, and how it was, it was formless and empty. It was void. It was formless, which means confusion and empty. And I think of, of our lives, how we were before Christ, how we were before the Holy Spirit and God got involved in our life and, and is putting things back together. Our lives were chaotic, chaotic, weren't there? Before Christ, where were we headed? We were headed to destruction. Things were out of whack. Things were out of sync, out of sync in your life, in your home, in your family. Formless, void, empty, chaotic and confused but here we are and believe me we are not where we need to be but we thank God right we know how the saying goes that we're not where we used to be I know God has so much to do in our lives but but give God glory for all that he's done in your life look at where you are and it doesn't mean that we settle for where we are it doesn't mean that we're satisfied with being where we are but we're thankful for being where we are God has done a great work in your life. I know you may see that you have so many hang-ups and, and, and shortcomings, but thank God you're not where you used to be. You have to give God glory for that. You have to thank God for that. God is a powerful worker. He's a patient God. He works miracles. He's changed our life. Thank you, Jesus. He's changed our life. He's changed our direction. Do you remember how it was in your home before Christ, before you met the Lord, how chaotic it was, how crazy it was? What kind of example were you to your children or to your husband or your wife? It was formless, filled with confusion. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. I think of all the ways that, that the Lord draws us into his kingdom. As chaotic as it seems, and this is, this is a word for, for those that are praying for your unsaved families. You know, you're here in the house of God, you're doing what God's called you to do, and you're praying for your family, you're believing God for your unsaved children, perhaps your unsaved husband or your unsaved wife. 
And it may look like their life is chaotic and things are out of whack. That things are confused, that things in their life are emptied and you worry about them and you constantly pray for them and you believe God for them. I encourage you tonight and I tell you that the Holy Spirit is right there working in their lives. The Bible says here that the Spirit during creation was hovering over the face, the surface of the waters as things were chaotic and confused. And in the same way, it may be that way with your family or your friends or those people that you're believing God for. But the Holy Spirit is right there moving. God is talking to them. God is ministering to them. God is working it out to where he could draw them into the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit is at work. Don't be discouraged, even if the situation looks contrary, because many times it does. It looks like they're getting worse. It looks like they're headed in the wrong direction. And you may say, Lord, I'm I'm praying to you. Are, Are my prayers working? Your prayers of faith are working. Keep praying. Keep believing God for them. God is working it out. God is doing something powerful in their life. You have to continue to pray for them. Amen. The Spirit of God was the first mover. In Matthew 1.18, we're talking about creation and the Holy Spirit's role in creation. Matthew 1.18, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, what does the Bible say? She became pregnant. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was at work. In Job 26.13, the Bible says, His Spirit made the heavens beautiful. We look out. All of creation declares that God is for real. All of creation glorifies God. I find it so hard to believe in this word. I I mean, it takes so much work to convince someone that God is, is not for real. I mean, look around us. Look at God's glory through creation, through the universe, through life. Look at God's creation. The Bible says in Job 26, 13, His Spirit made the heavens beautiful. The Holy Spirit is attributed the working of miracles. In Matthew 12, 28, Jesus says, But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. By the Spirit of God. God's still in the business of working miracles. The Holy Spirit is still at work today. In 2021, the Holy Spirit is at work. Miracles are still taking place. Miracles are still happening. Miracles are still transpiring. It's not just in the Word of God and the Bible. It's happening today. It's happening in our lives. It's happening in the lives of our loved ones. Miracles are still working, are still happening. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what's beautiful as we talk about God and who God is, even apart from us. He is worthy of all the praise. If he never does anything for us again, he's still worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of our devotion. He's worthy of our worship. But what's beautiful is God is a personal God. And here we read in Luke chapter 11, verse 13, that God gives us the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? God gives us the Holy Spirit. And here's what I want to I impress tonight, because God laid this on my heart tonight as I was praying, is that believer, I'm speaking to you right now, believer, you have Jesus in your heart. You have, he's, he's Lord and Savior of your life. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. The Holy Spirit is at work, is inside of you. That's what the Bible tells us. And it goes on, even in in 1 Corinthians 12, 3, the Bible says that no one can say Jesus is Lord without the Spirit. So the very fact that you came to Jesus and you confessed him as your Lord and Savior, that was done by the power of the Holy Spirit. You couldn't have said that without the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. So the Holy Spirit is at work inside of you, is living inside of you. Now, what does that encourage us, us to do? See, in the beginning, just a few moments ago, I talked about carnality, right? We know what it means to be carnal. We know what it means to to chase after the lusts of the flesh, to to do whatever feels good to our sinful nature. We know, we know, we know about that. We really know about that. I don't know how to put that into words, but we really know about that. 
But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we have to learn what it is to walk in the Spirit. Every day, you have to walk in the Spirit. Don't fulfill the lusts of the flesh, the Bible says, but fulfill the desires of the Spirit. What does the Spirit tell you to do? The Spirit drives you to pray, convicts you to pray. The flesh doesn't want to pray. It doesn't want you to get, it wants you to keep hitting that snooze button in the morning to get just a little bit more sleep, but the Holy Spirit will convict you and urge you to pray. The Holy Spirit will drive us to read the Word of God. The flesh doesn't want to do that. The flesh wants to turn on TV. It wants to spend all day watching YouTube or social media or whatever it is. The flesh would tell you to do that, but the Holy Spirit would say, open up my word, learn about me, get closer to me. So we have to begin learning to walk in the Spirit. If we want change in our life, church, and I know we want change, I know we, got, we want God to do new things in our life, we're going to have to walk in the Spirit. And God's Spirit will help us even to do that. God gives us the Holy Spirit. In John 14, which we read here in the beginning, but I'll, I'll look there in 1427, Jesus says, I'm leaving you with the gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. It's a gift. The Holy Spirit is there for you as a gift. You have to thank God for that. The Bible says we're also sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. The Bible says, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. You're identified by the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. The Spirit, the Bible says in verse 14, is God's guarantee. So you have God's Holy Spirit. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. One commentator said this, By Him, the Holy Spirit, believers are sealed. That is, separated and set apart for God and distinguished and marked as belonging to Him. It's a beautiful thing. The Holy Spirit seals us as God's own creation, as God's own. The Holy Spirit is also the comforter. In John 14, 16, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He's your comforter. Wherever you may be tonight, you may be in a place of inner turmoil. God knows what you went through before even walking in here to the house of God tonight. Whatever you experienced today, perhaps it wasn't the best day that you've had. Perhaps you encountered things that just upset your day, that ruined your day. He's your comforter. You could take comfort in him, knowing that he's at work in your life, knowing that, that you are above and not beneath, that you are the head and not the tail, that God is constantly working to, to bring you into a place of victory, even if your feelings, even if our feelings are contrary. You have victory. He shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Now, God is there to give us comfort, to give us grace and peace. Now, you know, as we, as we look in the Word of God, as we, as we dive in and you dig into the Word of God, nowhere in the Bible does it promise us that we're going to walk and we're going to skate through this life without any trials or tribulation, without any struggle. God doesn't tell us that. It's the contrary. That through much suffering, what does the Bible say? We'll enter the kingdom of God through suffering. Oh, man. But that's gospel tonight, church. But you know what the word of God also tells us? That he will never leave us nor forsake us. That he will never, ever leave us. We, we are promised that through the word of God. And that's the Holy Spirit that we have each and every day in each and every situation that we face. In Romans 8. 26, the Bible says, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed 
in words. Thank you, Jesus, for that truth. You know, I've seen it in my life, and I know you've probably seen it in your life. Even in a place of tragedy and, and disappointment and heartache and hurt in your life, you've seen the Spirit of God carry you through those situations where you're still able to get up every morning and look forward to what God's going to do. That you're still able to face a new day with a smile. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit working in your life. It doesn't mean that you've never been through struggles or trials. It doesn't mean that, that you're not hurt, but it means that you have a hope and a joy that you can trust in, and that's the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I've seen it. I've seen it with my own eyes. Believers that have, that have experienced tragedy, but have had a hope, an inner hope that, 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 that pushes them forward. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it in your life. I've seen it in others. And this is encouraging for, for those in this place that you may feel that you're beyond hope. That your situation and your trial is beyond fixing. That the struggle that you're facing, you feel that you're just ready to throw in the towel, that you can't take another ounce of trial or hurt. But the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. You feel weak, that's okay. You have the power of God inside of you. You have the power of God living inside of you. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. In Acts 15, verse 28, if you're taking notes, note that scripture down. But the, it starts off, it says, For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you. The Holy Spirit, there's, there's a spirit of liberty as we worship God. And we experience that tonight, and we're experiencing that. As we come into the house of God and as we worship God for who He is, as we thank Him, as we, as we worship Him, as we forget about ourselves, we forget about our day, we forget about what we're struggling with, and we just focus on Him and, and we look to Him, we experience breakthrough and we experience liberty. As we kicked off tonight, 2 Corinthians 3.17, for the Lord is the Spirit, and wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's freedom for you in your situation. Invite the Holy Spirit in. If you're in turmoil, if you're even at a place of hardship, maybe at work or at school, invite the Holy Spirit to work. Ask Him in. Ask Him into that situation. So he is our comforter. He is also our helper. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. He's not there to burden you. He's not there to discourage you. He's not there to lead you into sin or to lead you into hardship. He's there to lead you into righteousness. And the path that God takes us, it's an adventure. And it has highs and it has lows. It has mountaintops and it has valleys. But no matter what, we understand that we are victorious. Because why? Because the Holy Spirit is our helper tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Now, there's a scripture here in Acts 1.8. And I'm not going to spend much time on this because a uh, pastor next week is going to be talking about this, how the Holy Spirit gives us power. But I want to read this scripture here. It says in Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. There is power for you, available in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He teaches us. In Luke 12, 12, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what needs to be said. We live such busy lives, don't we? You know, I'm thinking about how busy we are, right? Maybe what you went through today at work. Maybe today at your job was just so, so utterly busy. And you were busy at work and time was just flying by. And then you get home and perhaps you have to get the kids ready for church. And you have to make dinner and you have to do all these things. And, and time is just flying by. And then, and then you're making it to, to glorify God. Thank you, Jesus, to come to the house of God to worship him. And our lives can be so busy, and, and being busy with, with good things that has its place, thank you, Jesus, we, have to, we, we, we can't be idle. But sometimes we allow busyness into our lives that, that distracts us from the voice of God. 
You know, sometimes we just need to slow down a little bit and listen to the voice of God. And I know you're in situations where you need answers. I know because I'm in, the, in those situations as well. I need God's help in my life. I need God's uh, uh, wisdom and direction in the things that I'm going through, in the daily decisions that I face. But willingly, and I'm saying this, willingly, sometimes we, we fill our lives up, and it's, it's filled up 110% with busyness, with noise, and with, with things that, that just are just that. It's just busyness. And don't get me wrong, there are those, those responsibilities that we have. God's called us to do the kingdom work and to accomplish his will, and we're going to be busy doing that. But there has to be a time where we, we detach and we focus on Christ. Jesus did that. He set that example for us. He was ministering to, to many people. He was healing the sick. He was, he was raising people from the dead, but he sought places of solitude. Why? So that he could be strengthened and he could hear from his heavenly Father so that he could hear from the Holy Spirit. He needed to recharge. Goodness, how much more do we? He was perfect, and he needed to recharge. He needed to get some alone time with his heavenly Father, with the Holy Spirit. How much more do we? These things. What an invention, right? I mean, it makes it, we benefit, right? It makes life easier in so many ways. But so much, man, we're spending our day doing this. And we're reading opinions. We're reading thoughts and, and some critical opinions. We're reading news and we're reading how things are going on here. And who's saying this and who's doing what? And, who, and what did they eat today? Or what are they wearing today? Or, you know, or where did they go today? And, and again, it has its place, I understand. But I've seen it. it, it can, man, you're, you're, an hour will go by like that. Two hours will go by like that. Media has its place, but we have to be careful Believer, we will benefit so much more if we take a percentage of that time that we invest into, into media and read God's word. See what he has to say. So-and-so's opinion in, uh, about my life, so-and-so's opinion is not going to change me. It's not going to cause a spiritual rebirth in my life, but the Word of God will cause that rebirth. The Word of God will change my life. The Word of God will encourage me. The Word of God will convict me. Everything has its place, but let's keep God as a priority. See, sometimes we wonder why we're dealing with anxiety. What are you taking in? We're vessels. Doesn't the Bible call us, call us vessels? We're vessels meant to be filled with something. Now, God created us to be filled with him, with his Holy Spirit, so that we can know him, so that we could live this life victoriously. But, but when we put that on the shelf and we start to fill ourselves up with what the news is saying or what Instagram is saying or what TikTok is trying to teach us, as we start to fill ourselves up with that, it's causing us to, to deal with anxiety that it's not in God's plan for us to deal with that anxiety. It's not God's will for you to worry about what's going on in here and there. See, when we read the Word of God, we're encouraged. We're given courage in our situations. But when we take on other things and when we fill ourselves with these other things, why are we surprised, church? Spend more time with him. And let me say this, quiet time. And this can be in the morning, but this could be there at your job. This could be there in that situation where you just need to slow down a moment. And you've been praying about something. You've been believing God for something. Would you put on the brakes for a moment and just say, God, just, just download into my spirit. Speak to me. Sometimes we don't know how to be quiet. I believe God wants to do some great things, and he wants to take us to new levels, church, each and every one of us. And starting with me, we have to, we have to reprioritize things in our life. And with that, we're going to see the change that we, that we really desire, church, the Holy Spirit is our helper. He will teach us. We have to live by faith, church. Any of this that, that we hear, we have to receive it in faith. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, and it is impossible to please God without faith. We have to have faith. We have to ask him. 
for help. When's the last time you've asked him for help? At work, in that situation at your job. You know, I was blessed uh, talking to Pastor Bob here just recently, and he was sharing, give, actually giving testimony of, of how God moved in his life there at work, and there was a situation that came up. But, but real time, the Holy Spirit gave him wisdom to deal with it. And that's what's beautiful about the Holy Spirit, right? Real time, he can help you. He can help you. As long as we depend on him, we have to depend on him. We have to ask him. And we read in Luke eleven thirteen, 13, how much, uh, if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So I encourage you, church, ask him. From the smallest thing to the grandest thing, to the, to the biggest trial in your life, ask him for a miracle. And as he moves, as he changes the, changes the course of that situation, you know what that is? That's a miracle. And in God's book, there are no small miracles. There's no big miracles. There are just miracles. And God is still in the business of doing miracles. So church, if we would understand what God is trying to tell us tonight, that the Holy Spirit is our blessing, that the Holy Spirit is there to teach us, to be gracious to us, to guide us, to comfort us, and to help us as a worship team makes her way up tonight. We understand that God has not left us empty-handed. God's standard is righteousness, yes. And we may find it hard to live according to God's word and righteousness, but he gives us a Holy Spirit to do that. He'll give you the power to live righteously. He'll give you the power to be victorious in that area of your life that you've been struggling with. I believe a change is going to take place tonight as you come up to the altar and in faith you lay it out to Jesus and you give it to him and you ask for the Holy Spirit to help you overcome in that situation. I believe change is going to take place tonight. The Holy Spirit is going to move in your life. This goes for the unbeliever, and yes, this even goes for the believer. For those of us that have been serving God, we have issues and areas that we need God's help in. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He's our comforter. Perhaps you're struggling. Perhaps you're hurt. You're in a broken heart. This evening, the Holy Spirit wants to comfort you, wants to rest upon you, wants to give you peace, peace of mind. That's what Jesus said. A peace that the world can't take away, that situations can't steal from you. See, that's our promise, church. And with God's help, this week, the rest of this month, and this year as we head into the holidays, let's rely on Him. Let's listen for the Holy Spirit. Let's seek the Holy Spirit's direction. Let's seek His comfort and seek His help. And I believe as we do that, we're going to see the changes take place that we've been desiring. Thank you, Jesus. Church, you receive that tonight? Let's give God praise in this place. Let's worship him. Father, we thank you, Lord God. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for all that you're doing in our life, God. We thank you for calling us, Lord. We thank you for sealing us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for comforting us, my God. We thank you for the peace of mind, Lord, that you've given us, God. We thank you for victory, my God. We thank you, Father, for the work of your righteousness, Jesus. We thank you for your blood, Lord God, and all that you're doing in our life, Lord. We give you honor and glory tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Church, if we could bow our heads as we pray tonight.